Hello, YouTube. How are you? Welcome, welcome, and happy Monday. I am actually joining, um, doing an extra live this week, and it's something that I'm probably going to keep incorporating into my schedule because on Mondays, I'm uploading the podcast that Robert and I record over the weekend. And um, I have my eyeshadow. My makeup is totally different today. I just got done recording. Um, I just got done recording tomorrow's YouTube and I'll show you how I did my look. And like I said, it's a little bit different and I keep on staring at my eyes. I'm like, but you know what? If you don't try new things, how are you going to learn whether you like it or not? And um, so that's my whole philosophy for, for today. Now, let's see. What am I want to say? It is, oh my gosh, it is raining again. It wasn't even supposed to rain. And for some reason it's raining and it's just kind of like a little bit of a, you know what, I'm over it kind of day. I'm over the cold. I um, I want to wear my cute stuff that I'm buying. So that's a different subject for a different day. Anyway, what we're going to talk about today is, like I said, I uploaded the podcast and you can either watch it here on YouTube or you can listen to it on Spotify or iTunes. But the subject, there's Indy, but the subject that I talked about on um, the podcast was the difference between childhood trauma and adult trauma. All right. And it's a real personal journey for me. So whenever I talk about things like this, whenever I talk about like healing yourself or, you know, your own journey to healing, I just want you to know that I'm not a doctor. I'm not a counselor. I'm not a therapist, but I do enjoy sharing my journey with you all in hopes that it helps you if you need to hear any of this for yourself. Now, on the podcast, um, I won't tell you everything that I said, but I did reference um, an article that I read. And the article that I read it's, was seven ways that you can heal um, childhood trauma, or you could basically heal your inner child. So I want to go over that a little bit more today on our lives. I just have to find it. I'm trying to pull it up here. And let's see if I can do it. Did I put it as there? No, I did not. So let's see if I put it there. No, I did not. I will find it because that's just what I do. Um, so anyway, it was, oh, here it is right here. So it, the article is, do, do, do. gosh, you know what? It's like, always seven things, but let me find the one that I really want to reference. And I am so sorry about this. So we'll just chit chat while I'm looking because apparently I am that type of person that cannot navigate their own, their own phone. How do I find it here? Let's see, show all. All right, this is super fun. So tell me about your week. What are you doing? I am actually having to go and um, I cannot for the life of me find a toy that Indy cannot. Um, this is really frustrating, y'all, because I have it saved and I have it saved to my favorites and it is not pulling up. So let me find it. All right. So let's, ah, this is me having a meltdown right in the middle of, I know how I can find it. This is me having a meltdown right in the middle of my life. So if you think like ever like, oh my gosh, she's got her, her act all put together. You are unfortunately not, that's not the way it is. Where is, hi, okay. This is how you deal with adversity. This is how you are going to, I'm going to show you that. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. You have no idea how freaking frustrated I am right now. I am just like to the point where I'm like, I'm going to throw my phone. 
And because in my mind, I had this all just planned out. I was just going to come here and I was going to be like, yeah, let me just pull this up on my iPad and I'm going to show you how easy this is. Um, oh gosh. Uh, let's see. Is there any way to translate this? Um, no. So hello and hello. Um, habla espanol. Or habla espanol. Okay, I will have to read that, and I am so sorry. I can't. I don't. I can't. There's no translating button. Okay. So whew, again, healing. This is from Solara Mental Health. So I am so glad you hung out with me for five minutes while you watched me have like a mental breakdown, um, got frustrated, worked my way through it, and I am back. So the article that I referenced that I want to talk to you a little bit more about is from Solara Mental Health. And I do have it tagged in the podcast and I will tag it here on this live. But it's basically, it's like seven suggestions on how you can heal your inner child. And I'm going to go over each seven steps because on the podcast, I didn't really go into depth on all seven steps. So the first one is acknowledge your inner child. So super easy. You just have to acknowledge that it exists. And when I say acknowledge your inner child, I'm not talking about like, um, you know, acting immature or anything like that. But it's just basically you have to acknowledge your past. Your past transforms itself and becomes your inner child. So those things that you were hurt with as a kid have a tendency to still hurt you as an adult. So by acknowledging it, it will help you grow from there. Number two is validate what happened. And this is extremely important because a lot of times what happens is, is like when you talk to people about your past, they have a tendency to be like, you know what, just get over it. And you, while I say you can grow from it and you can't let your past hold you down, getting, just letting go of your past or just being like, you know what, just let it go isn't correct. You need to validate it. You need to understand what happened. You need to embrace what happened and you need to acknowledge what happened. Good, bad, or indifferent. And then I mean, even like, and it doesn't have to be like every, sometimes like we can still have trauma from just like growing up. I think everybody who has a childhood has issues from childhood. Number three is identify the form of neglect you experienced. Now, this is really important. You know, it, again, it's like validating your past. It's like understanding what happened. It's, to me, it's really important to identify exactly what it is that, you know, is coming. What, what exactly is it that is affecting you today? For example, I mean, for myself, I was raised in a very hostile family, um, I experienced a lot of um, violent um, dialogue on a daily basis. You know, it wasn't a physically abusive family, but it was a verbally abusive family from the day I was born. And it's not until I, be, I was 58 years old that I could actually verbalize that. And it wasn't until I was 58 years old that I was like, yeah, you know what? This has nothing to do with... Um, I, I, by me saying it, I'm not putting down my parents. I'm just ex validating my childhood, which is huge for me. Um, number four is embrace your emotions. And by that, if you're sad, be sad. If you're mad, be mad. If you're hurt, be hurt. And a lot of times, again, when we get to be older, if we don't validate our emotions, if we don't like embrace what happened, if we don't validate what happened, all these emotions that are churning around in our head and our heart and that are affecting our daily lives, you don't know what emotion to attach to it. You know, as a child, I was sad. As a child, I was angry. As a child, I was, you know, I was this and I was that. So when something happens in my adult life, I can be like, oh, wait, that reminds me of when I was a kid because I was feeling that emotion as a child. So a validate what and embrace whatever emotions your childhood brings up. You need to embrace that. 
Number five is identify current manifestations of past hurts. Now, this one's really important because what I found that I was doing is it's like in any situation, like if I were having a conversation with one of my children and something was taken the wrong way, I would instantly go back to like my hurt when I was a kid. And all of a sudden I was like dealing with this situation like five-year-old Lonnie. I was, I was manifesting those feelings as a child and putting them in my adult life. So it's really important to know that sometimes the way you react as an adult, you're actually reacting to those experiences you had as a child. So again, it's really important to separate those two. And probably one of the hardest things I ever did was to acknowledge that I have an inner child that needs healing. And then I have an adult that has its own issues. So it's by separating those two things is that's really given me the most growth in, in later in life. And then number six is take steps to fill the gap. And by that, it's like, let's just say you, as a child, you experience um, a a childhood that's not full of emotions. You know, maybe you have very distant parents and you didn't get that nurturing that you wanted as a child. Then as an adult, in a very healthy way, you need to like find a partner who actually listens to you. Find a partner who will be like, wow, you matter. You know, let's talk about it. Let's share this experience. You basically want to find that emotion that you lacked as a child. And with this one comes a really big asterisk and a really big warning sign. Because a lot of times what happens is, is that we repeat our childhood um, relationships in our adult relationships. My ex-husband was very um, cold. I mean, I kind of basically married my ex married my ex-husband and I had the same experiences when I was a kid. You know, I didn't have a voice. I, I really couldn't be myself. And I repeated that pattern. So when it says to take steps to fill the gap, make sure you do it in a healthy manner and you just don't repeat the past. And then finally, number seven, mend the hurt by helping others, which is absolutely amazing because that's one of the reasons why I share my journey so much and I am so open and honest about it because when I decided to get sober and when I decided to do this journey and tell people about my life and, and show, try to encourage people to find their own path of healing, I decided like, I was like, you know what, Lonnie, you couldn't have gone through all of this for nothing. You know, you can't go through all of these experiences and all these hurts and not share it with people and try to help others heal along their journey also. So you don't have to like, you know, like go to the extreme of starting a social media channel and sharing your entire life, but you can find ways to help others. And even if it's as just as simple as being compassionate to a friend who might be going through something, you know, then you're helping others or you can volunteer, you can do all sorts of things to try to help others. And when you help others, it makes you feel good. And it also gives you a sense of strength because you went from being, you know, a child where it, when you're a child, you have circumstances that you have no control over to when an adult where all of a sudden you're like, wow, you know what? I can help others. I'm in more of a controlled kind of like role than I was as a child. So just seeing that that balance between the two people of who we are, because I truthfully think, again, this is just my opinion, but I truthfully think that we all have two people living inside of us. We have our child living inside of us and we have our adult living inside of us. And sometimes they, they, they fight for control. They fight as to who's going to control the emotions. And it's really important to acknowledge and validate that child part. But 
it's really important to know that we are the adult, we are in control of our emotions, and we finally have that control in our life. Because I'm going to tell you right now, as a child, and if you're in a, like a neglect in a neglectful childhood kind of scenario where you have those scars and those feelings um, going into your adult life, the feeling of hopelessness or not feeling like you have any say so over your life is a real triggering um, feeling. So know that you have the power. I always tell my kids, you're in the driver's seat of your car. You are the one driving this life. Make sure that you drive it in a form that you want. You're no longer in the passenger seat. I mean, everything that happened to me as a kid, I turned around and did to my own children. You know, I raised them as an alcoholic. And so to me, it's like I... Um, I have no animosity towards my parents at all because I know in my heart of hearts, I never intentionally purposely hurt my children, but that did not neg 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 that did not alleviate the fact that I did. I don't think my parents purposely tried to hurt me, but they did. So it's just kind of like, you know, it, it's looking at it that way. I always say, and this is one of my favorite saying when it comes to my, my parents who um, have passed. And that's one of the reasons why I don't talk about them a whole, whole lot is because they have passed away. You know what? And I don't want to tarnish their memory. And I don't want to ever say anything um, hurtful about my parents. But I always say I did not understand my parents as a child, but I have learned to forgive them as an adult. And just by taking that power and by knowing that I had the ability to do that has been super growing for me. So that is what I wanted to talk to you about today. Just wanted to start the week off with just a little bit of seven tips of, you know, things to think about, things to um, reflect on. Um, we all have a journey. We all have a past. We all have a childhood. Um, Nobody is as perfect. And I think we just need just a little bit of compassion for each other and definitely some compassion for ourselves. Once we start forgiving ourselves and giving ourselves just that, that extra hug and that extra little love, it flourishes and it actually manifests into a whole lot of good stuff. Um, Indy's here and she, again, won't jump up and say hello, but I am on a mission to find this dog, some kind of toy that she won't destroy in like two minutes. Robert and I went to home goods yesterday and we got all sorts of Nerf toys for her and they were supposed to be super like, um, super like, you know, like a tough chewer kind of toy and they're all gone. She chewed them all up in one day. So when we were checking out, the lady was pretty cool. And she's like, yeah, you know what? I have German Shepherds. They're like really, you know, aggressive chewers. And she gets her dog's horse toys. And I'm like, oh, that's what I'm going to get Indy. I'm going to get her like a horse toy. I guess they like play with balls or something. And they're supposed to be super duper um, industrial. And she's not supposed to care. And she's not supposed to be able to chew them up. Hold on. She wants to go get a toy to show you. Um, what are you going to show us? Come here. Say hello. There she is. Say hello. Come here. Say hello. So I don't know if you saw it or not, but if you watched my um, the last video I did where I responded to all of the, the comments on um, my viral short at the very end of that video is actually a, um, a clip of her when she was six weeks old and she was the cutest little puppy. And she literally acts the same at 10 months old. All right. So that was it. That was my Monday check-in. I will be back on Wednesday. Um, different subject for Wednesday. I, um, I showed you some stuff I got from Zara last time and some of it worked, some of it didn't. So I'll tell you about it then. I got some more unboxing to do. So remember, be bright people, be brave. You have, you are in the driver's seat of your car called life. You know what? Take control of it. Those are your emotions. That's your life. 
And I hope I help you navigate that in the best way possible. So until Wednesday, I will see you later and have a great week.